welcome <laughs> to the EV Nautilus. Uh, we are an exploration vessel. We're one of three worldwide that are dedicated specifically to ocean exploration. We uh, base our research targets off of priorities identified by the scientific community in biology, geology, and archaeology. And we just spent the last five months off the coast of California. Um, I heard that I spent time in a submarine. We actually don't have submarines, but I'll explain why in just a few minutes. Um, but we spent the time off the coast of the West Coast from British Columbia down to San Diego. And we are, if you're familiar with Mbari here locally, you've probably seen some of the equipment that we use. So we do multi-beam mapping sonar to see what's down on the sea floor before we send our vehicles down. So ROV Hercules is our workhorse ROV. Those are, uh, in front here, you have two manipulator arms to collect samples and place them into sample boxes to then bring up to the surface. We also have HD cameras on Hercules. And then we have Argus that usually trails behind. And Argus has, again, nice cameras on board to give you kind of an overview, a fisheye view, if you will, of the sea floor. Um, so those two ROVs, those remotely operated vehicles, whoops, too far. I'm getting excited with the clicker. There we go. Um, <laughs> those two ROVs are connected via a fiber optic cable up to the ship, where we then get all that video feed coming into the ship. We beam it up into space to a satellite, where it then comes down to Rhode Island we're able to send that video feed all around the world. So people anywhere with an internet connection can actually explore the deep sea live with us. We were founded in 2008 by Dr. Robert Ballard. Uh, we're run, the Nautilus is run by the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is a nonprofit. Now, Dr. Ballard, you might have heard of as the guy who discovered this, the Titanic. <laughs> However, he prefers to be known as the guy who discovered this, deep sea hydrothermal vents. These are very hot, very chemically rich areas of the ocean that communities of animals have sprung up nearby, creating their own energy without the power of the sun. Pretty cool stuff. It changed the way we thought about life in our oceans and life on the planet. But when you hear Dr. Ballard's name or you think about ocean exploration, this is usually what you think of. <laughs> These are my books, by the way. <laughs> uh, now, you might also might think about folks like this. Um, and this is part of our challenge, is that it's hard really to ocean exploration when it's being done by legendary figures in the past encountering these really crazy, strange, mythical animals. But this is what we're trying to make ocean exploration look like, or sound like, whoop. <laughs> Some of you might have already seen them. <laughs> because these weren't scientists using jar technical jargon. Um, they weren't necessarily getting uh, all the information out at the right time, and they certainly got a few things wrong. Our engineers and communicators who were on that watch called it an octopus and a cuttlefish. No one even thought about squid until they came down the stairs. So the point that we took away from this was that the reason this, this was so compelling for so many people was because it was we were watching humans encountering something that we've never seen before just like all of us at home who were watching. And that was pretty exciting for us. So this is one of the core principles that we work towards and that I work towards in my work to show you that ocean exploration isn't necessarily what you think it is. So to start telling that story, we start, of course, with people. And this is one of our NOAA scientists getting very excited about a glass sponge. Not necessarily the face you'd expect for a NOAA scientist. So uh, when you listen into our live stream on Nautilus Live, you'll hear a lot of different people behind the scenes, but you might not necessarily see them. So I wanted to give you a little glimpse into what that's like into our control room. So when we saw that stubby squid, we had our science leaders say, wow, that's cool, let's take a look. We had two ROV pilots who stopped the vehicles. We had a navigator who called the bridge and said, hey, let's stop the ship, and here are our coordinates. We had a video engineer zoom in and focus the cameras on the squid. We had our science communication fellow um, trying to communicate with the folks at home and answer questions on what we were seeing. 
have our data logger taking notes and taking still images, and then we have our watch leader finally say, hey guys, this is really cool, but we gotta keep moving. So a lot of different people who all came together to make this one image possible to go, <laughs> to go out into the world and really capture the imagination of millions of people around the world. So a little background on how I was out there. I came on as a science communication fellow um, after starting a company to run underwater robot building workshops for high school girls. Um, I actually ended up getting hired on to the Ocean Exploration Trust team to do digital media. So my first few weeks on the job were pretty interesting thanks to that stuffy squid. Um, but I was on board in a couple of different capacities in order to demystify what was going on on the ship and demystify the kind of things we were seeing, like this beautiful larvation snot house. Now, <laughs> the first time I heard the term snot house was, as Ethan mentioned, in Miss Keith's marine biology class here at York. And because, of course, you know, where else would I hear, hear the term snot house? Not exactly a scientific term, right? So these larvations are incredible animals that are actually more closely related to us than they are to jellies. Um, they create these beautiful nets to filter food out of the water. And in telling these stories that I learned in marine bio here, and then also from many years at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, I kind of became the de facto invertebrate biologist on board, which was really strange, because I'll tell you right now that my degree is in the other science, political science. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll also tell you that our ROV pilot that day, was, when we saw the study squid, was actually a fine arts degree. Our video engineer creates water sampling tools, while another video engineer films NASCAR races. The other educators on board with me, one has a degree in public health, and the other teaches Girl Scout programs. So as you might have already guessed, this is not your typical research vessel, hence exploration vessel. So we bring out people from all different countries, all across our own country, and the hope, of course, is that when you tune into Nautilus Live and hear us, you might hear or see someone who you can relate to. And that's really what we're trying to communicate here, is that ocean exploration is for everyone. Our viewers not only span the globe, but they also span generations. We've had folks tuning in, grandparents and grandkids watching from Missouri. We've had um, a father and son in a hospital sick bed in Italy tune in. A whole watch team of EMTs in New Jersey who are frequent viewers. Um, robotic students from South Africa and knitters in New Zealand, all tuning in, all watching the same live feeds from the deep sea that we were. And that's really what we're all about. You know, we could be seeing something at the same time as everyone else, and it could be new to science. So, whoop, we'll go back one. <laughs> um, and that's, again, really what we're doing here. So those live streams enable anyone around the world to join in with us. I want to kind of create a, a, a unity, I guess, between the people on board and then also live. We're all watching that same stream. We could all be seeing something happening in real time. And that provides an interesting opportunity because only a few select people get to explore outer space, but we can all be ocean explorers. So to all the people who are wondering, is that stubby squid real? My answer to you will always be yes. And what else can we find together? So I'd invite you to join us when we explore live. Thank you.